Energy Bagua Aerobics. Let's start to practice Energy Bagua Aerobics. Let's do warm up exercises first. Feet shoulder width apart. Prepare for side stretch. Stretch your left hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, two, three, four. Prepare for chest expansion. To the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four. Prepare for high knees. Right leg first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kick back. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put your right leg back for lunges. Try to keep your hind leg straight. Five, six, seven, eight. Bring your hind legs half step forward. Sit back and raise your toes. Five, six, seven, eight. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring your hind legs half step forward. Sit back and raise your toes. Prepare to rotate wrists and ankles. Rotate your left first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, two, three, four, five. Prepare to do settle chi three times. First time. Settle chi to your lower abdomen. Second time. Legs slightly bent. Third time. Five, six, seven, eight. Get ready for the first set of movements. Punch and kick. Bring back your right leg and punch with right hand. One, two, three, four. Use force from your back when punching. The back drives the arms to exert force. Five, six, prepare to switch. Switch, left punch, right punch, kick. Exert force from your back. Seven, eight, harder. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Prepare for archery exercise. Five, six, seven, eight. Bring back your right leg. Three, turn left. Five, six, back, eight. Pull back with force. Three, turn right. Five, six, back, eight. Use force from both arms. Three, turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Four, two, three, turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, two, three, turn left. Five, six, seven, eight. Six, two, three, turn right. Five, six, seven, eight. Seven, two, three, turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight, two, three, turn. Five, six, Seven, eight. Prepare for knee strikes. Right knee first. One, two, three, four. Hands and knee exert force simultaneously. Pull with force. Three, four, five. Prepare to switch sides. Switch. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Use your core to exert force. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Prepare for Move the Mountain. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. To the right. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Push your palms. Three, right leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Use your core power to push out. Three, to the left. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Push your palms. Three, left leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Use Hung Ha to exert Chi. Three, to the right. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Open up your entire body. Three, right leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Keep upper body straight when pushing out. To the left. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Use force from core to push palms. Three, left leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Get ready for the second set of movements. Great job! Do punch and kick. Bring back your right leg and punch with right hand. One, two, three, four. Use force from your back when punching. Harder. Two, two, three, four, five, six. Prepare to switch. Switch. Left punch. Right punch. Kick. Exert force from your back. Seven, eight, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Prepare to do archery exercise. Five, six, seven, eight. Right leg step back. Three, turn left. Five, six, back, eight. Pull back with force. Three, turn right. Five, six, back, eight. Use force from both arms. Three, turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Keep your core stable. Three. Turn. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Open up your chest and meridians. Three. Turn. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Harder. Three. Turn. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Seven. Two. Three. Turn. Five. Six, seven, eight. Eight, two, three. Turn. Five, six, seven, eight. You're awesome! Prepare for knee strike. Right knee first. One, two, three, four. Hands and knee exert force simultaneously. Use your core to exert force. Three, Four, five, six, prepare to switch. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go prepare again. for move the mountain. Five, six, seven, eight. One. Two, three, to the right. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Push your palms. Three, right leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Use your core power to push out. Three, to the left. Ho! Six, seven, eight. Push your palms. Three, left leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Eight. Use Hung Ha to exert Chi. Three. To the right. Ho! Six. Seven. Eight. Open up your entire body. Three. Right leg forward. Ha! Six. Seven. Eight. Keep upper body straight when pushing out. To the left. Ho! Six. Seven. Eight. Use your core power to push out. Three. Left leg forward. Ha! Six, seven, eight. Well done, everyone. Great job! Get ready for relaxation. 
Take three deep breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Once more. Exhale. Move arms back in circular motions. Right hand first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Move to the front. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Arm stretch. Stretch the right shoulder. Five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Three, four, five, six. Put right hand on left shoulder and look back. Relax lower back. Five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Try to look back. Five, six. Put your right leg back for lunges. Try to keep your hind leg straight. Five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, three, four. Prepare to shake your hands and feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take three deep breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Again, inhale. Exhale. Last time, inhale. Exhale. Today's Energy Bagua Aerobics has been completed. I wish you all health and happiness. Till next time. Master Jin Bodhi's Golden Words The best time to plan the year is spring. The best time to plan the day is dawn. If we recite Master Jin Bodhi's Golden Words every morning, we'll be full of energy, confidence, creativity, vitality, and infinite charisma for the entire day. Everything will be transformed. Please recite them aloud. I am most compassionate. I am most confident. I am most tolerant. I am most courageous. I am most trustworthy. I am most punctual. I can do anything. I am full of wisdom. I am most knowledgeable. I love to read. I love to observe. I love to listen. I love to think. I take decisive action. I am a gem of the universe. I am most charming. I am most talented. I sing most beautifully. I like challenges. I am most accountable. I will fulfill my life purpose. In heaven and on earth, I am supreme. In heaven and on earth, I am supreme. In heaven and on earth, I am supreme. Please sit down slowly. 
Relax your body and mind. Remain calm and relaxed. Listen carefully. Yin alone doesn't enable growth, Yang alone cannot bring life. This is the principle of life and the way of destiny. How do we flow with the ways of Yin and Yang while experiencing the pain and joy of life? Welcome to Grandmaster Jean Bodhi's About Fate series. About Fate Series 4, The Yin and Yang in Life Hello, everyone. Hello, Master. It's hard to summarize human fate. What exactly is fate? Through reading history, everyone feels, including me. Fate is the destiny given by heaven waiting to be fulfilled. It's like the abstract sense of fulfilling one's destiny. We have it. Look at all of us here. Look at the environment you're born into. Your parents' conditions, and your country surroundings. Every family is different. We all have separate families, parents and troubles. Hence the difference in fate. From when we are born to the environment and events we currently experience. Regardless of who you are, this is your fate. You might wonder about the nature of your fate. The answer is you, you are your fate. Some say, I'm suffering right now. This pain is also part of your fate, which you must experience. It's not a bad thing. Often people ask me what to do when faced with these problems and pain. My approach revolves around just learning to accept. Does acceptance mean I gave up? It's accepting the reality. Whether you give up or not, it's an issue of your inner strength. If you're experiencing poverty, of course you don't want to continue being poor. You'll probably work hard. Then you'll say, you talked about accepting fate. Then I'll accept it even if I'm starving. It's okay if I die starving tomorrow. Will you do things like this? Don't many people get married because they haven't given up on fate, right? Your partner is not born along with you. If it's your twin, they're your sibling, right? You can't marry your sibling. If you're born with terrible looks, you have to diligently struggle to present yourself. You even formed a marital bond. You create because you don't have money. Is this called accepting fate? This is natural thinking. I'm poor, therefore I work hard. I need to eat, right? I want to marry, so I find my other half. I want my future job to be better, so I study hard. Because my life has imperfections. I use my actions to make up for them. Wasn't Zhu Yuanzhang? 
the founding emperor of Ming Dynasty, a man who went through countless life tragedies. Try to recall them. He was poor, his family didn't have their own land. His parents worked long term for landlords. They were long term farm workers, with no land, they had to work for other people. There was no space for burial when they died. Can anyone be poorer than them? He experienced all this with nowhere to go. Didn't he become a monk only after becoming an orphan? You think he did that because of faith? He just needed to survive. He was just a teenage orphan back then. Was killing all he did after he became a general? Let me tell you this. He worked every day in fear for his life. When he was young, people died from starvation or sickness. If you were weak and poor, you couldn't afford medicine and food. Basically, you're betting your life. I bet many of you have joined the military. Soldiers now have only lived in peaceful times and only do drills. There's no experience of real war. Because there's a low chance of survival in a real war. Many soldiers die from war. Becoming a soldier means you could die anytime. Zhu braced through that. If he didn't become a soldier, he could have been arrested as a spy for the rebels. He would have been put behind bars. But joining the rebels would mean facing death every day. He could lose his head any time before becoming an emperor. You think being the king is a happy thing, but before that, he was escaping death every day. Who would be happy doing that? After discussing Zhu's story, many thought he was fulfilling his destiny. Do you know what I think? This is what I think of his fate. He was forced into it, this was not destiny given by heaven. Each different turn could have led him away from the throne. He could end up a monk, or die at fifteen due to starvation, right? Just another dead body in a pile of bodies. Or, another soldier dead on the battlefield. Maybe he'd just die as a nobody. Just a dead body. Every step was risky. Would you say that this is all Divine's work to create a thrilling and bloody play? Nope. This is reality. He ended up being an emperor because he had no other option. His first thought was, I have no other option but to fight. Fight for his life. He could have died at any time, right? Either from starvation or being killed. This is basically what he was thinking. As for his name, there are a lot of coincidences. He had a glorious life. As we study it, there are a lot of coincidences. Maybe it's fate. If he had died early, then wouldn't the explanation be different? Nobody would explain a nameless soldier who died halfway through. 
there's too many of them out there. Who would study their life? He had the motivation to fight because he had no other option. The Rich Children of Today Their fathers and grandfathers have left them with a lot of money to inherit. Would they fight like Zhu? Zhu fought to find a way to live, he didn't fight to become an emperor. As for the things he did at a young age, he was a bit dramatic and bold, right? In general, the world is formed by both yin and yang. How much struggle does one need to go through? Like when we draw a line, the point in the middle is zero. On either side, the value is either negative or positive. Like how here the left is positive, and the right is negative. The negative energy, energy meaning your experiences and feelings. Like poverty, starvation, sickness, physical abuse, pain, fatigue, the passing of your parents, etc. All these are considered a negative energy. Let's say my negative energy is a big chunk up there. That's the line of our lives. The negative energy can stimulate more positive energy from me. Say, I've accumulated up to 3 centimeters of negativity. Here, this is 3 centimeters on the vitality line. This 3 centimeters of negativity will promote a certain amount of positivity. For some, it's 1 to 1. He'll also have 3 centimeters of positivity stimulated. Negativity is a certain amount. Positivity is the same amount. With 3 centimeters of negativity, they'll generate 3 centimeters of positivity. The ratio depends on your intelligence, awareness and merits. Some are able to grow 10 centimeters or 100 centimeters of positivity out of 3 centimeters of negativity. There's just a little push of negativity to draw out their potential. People with high awareness and good qualities, it's in their fate. Fate usually refers to the merit a person has. So, a little bit of negativity in life isn't that bad. Because it stimulates positivity. I'm going to draw a second figure. The left side is still positive, so it's easy for us to tell. The right side is negative. Let's imagine I was born into a wealthy family. I'm smart, good, and nice looking, I perform well at school and at work. So I grew up with lots of positivity. Say, 3 centimeters of positivity. I have good awareness, I apply what I learn. With 3 centimeters of positivity, 10 centimeters of negativity is promoted. Rich, living in abundance, good looking, high awareness. Being blessed as such can ruin a person. The theory of yin and yang is best described by energy accumulation. When I studied the theory of yin and yang, 
My master said Yin alone doesn't enable growth, Yang alone cannot bring life. I'm going to draw a Yin Yang diagram here. This diagram tells us that when an element enlarges or shrinks to an extreme level, positive or negative energy is produced. Positive and negative energy are the keys to the creation of the universe, especially the energy formed on Earth. Everything has positive and negative energy, that's how it can be whole. Human reproduction for example, you need a male and a female to produce a new life, right? This is how beings on this planet we inhabit are created. This applies to all physical matter and also to events. Things associated with positivity include happiness, joy, wealth, authority, good looks, etc. Say, we consider something positive, behind it lies negativity. It's like a circle, wherever positivity exists lies negativity. When you link both positivity and negativity using a circle, you get a yin yang diagram. Under the theory of yin and yang, twists and turns are common. Does three years of hardships promise three years of the good life? First, you might die after a few days of good life, it's possible. Or, your three years of hardships bring you 70 years of good life. That's also possible. The exact ratio of this is only known by heaven, not humans. But all things are formed with positivity and negativity together. Remember, yin alone doesn't enable growth, yang alone cannot bring life. These concepts are ingrained in my brain from childhood. My master reminded me about them often. When my hands did the double yang palm when practicing energy bagua, my master said to me, too much yang and you'll lose yang. All right, I'll do the double yin palm then. Too much yin and nothing's left. We must always seek balance. If it's all balanced, I won't grow then. Practice balance and see for yourself in three years. He wasn't lying. I grew healthier and my energy more powerful. So he said all things are based on the balance of yin and yang. Balancing is not to diminish, but to grow steadily. Let all things grow in balance. Such growth is the safest. Remember this saying. Men, though poor, must not steal. And women, though poor, must not whore. Because during times of poverty, these are the most direct methods of exchanging money and goods. This may sound ridiculous for people in present day. You haven't experienced being penniless, that's why. You'd be better at stealing than the thieves, right? But in some teachings from the ancients, there's still a lot we can absorb. When our environment is not vile to a certain extent, the teachings still provide us with important guidance. I hope that we could follow. Some elites would say, I can't finish a meal without my $100,000 poor tea. Or, I can't sleep without having expensive French wine. That's decadent and chaotic behavior. Or, I only drive cars from Germany. 
That's nonsense, these people have nothing to do. Being wealthy doesn't mean one should live lavishly. Keep doing it and troubles will follow. Imagine your grandpa who was a refugee. And your dad who worked hard to feed his family, including you. If wealth reaches the third generation, then the grandkids eat dumplings and spit out the skin. There's an old saying. Family wealth can't pass beyond the third generation. The third generation never lived through hardships. Or ever really understood the concept of yin and yang. He never knew or experienced hardships. How can he know anything about fighting hard for his life? If he never experienced poverty, how does he know to create value? People often blame their poor fate when their life is hard. Thinking that their life sucks. We are teaching people to treat their hardship seriously. Learn to accept it first, and attempt changes gradually. Normally people say, you don't get my pain as you never went through it. Someone keeps messaging me online about how her money was swindled. She kept sending messages every day, instead of wasting her time online. Has she tried to earn her money back? No. The greedy and deceptive thought of seeking effortless gain has already arisen. Aren't you guys kind? I'm poor and in hardship, at least give me some support. If everyone donates a little, I'll be rich. Any money not derived from real effort and work is not safe money. The result of getting such money could turn into something akin. To the mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole behind. You finally got money through improper methods. It's akin to the praying mantis getting its cicada, and starting to bite on it. But an oriole is behind, waiting to eat them both. Very unsafe. After experiencing hardships, Firstly, don't underestimate your hardships, afflictions, and stress. Face it directly. Don't be scared. Accept them with positivity and composure. And then, devise a plan to solve them. If it can't be solved now, it will be within a week. If a week is too short, a month or a lifetime will do. Time can erase everything. When it first started, you wanted to kill your enemy when you saw him. After a month, would you still want to kill him? You'd say, don't let me see you again. After a year, you see him. You're still angry, but you don't feel like killing him. After a decade, you'd say, just forgive him. He's nothing. It's okay. It gets solved in one sentence, right? So time can allow our soul to be healed. It can solve all problems. One hundred years later, your pain and joy are nowhere to be found.
everyone would start to feel liberated. I've been talking about troubles, but when we're faced with good things. Remember this, when things seem happy, and you believe good things are about to arrive, you need to treat them with caution. Don't think that things you consider good will surely bring actual good results. Many good things bring bad outcomes. Many young couples can't have children. Once they have money, they work hard to have a child. When the child arrives, they are so happy. Finally, he's here. If you don't have kids, the money is saved. When the child turned 28, he spent all the money the family had. Money you've earned your whole life, and he spent it all. You're not overjoyed, you're furious. If you knew about this, would you still be so overjoyed with the newborn child? So, don't shower your child with expensive gifts. A moderate amount is enough. If you can buy it with one dollar, don't buy the one hundred dollars one. Because it might not bring good to the child. The truth of everything comes from the arising of yin and yang. Get it? Things reverse when they go to the extreme. You're safe when you're short of money to afford a house. When you've got more money and can afford a house, things go wrong. Usually your siblings or relatives cause things to go wrong. What kind of things? Borrowing and scamming money. Your dream house is about 1 million USD. When you've saved $600,000, the opportunists will pay a visit and ask to borrow some money. This is the law of nature. This is only half. The other half is waiting for you. Saving up money is good. Others borrowing and not returning is bad. These two things come together and become emptiness. It used to be a circle with half the money hidden in it. Now the money is taken by others. It's still a circle, an empty one, and will remain empty in the future. He took it away in advance, that's why it's so painful. So don't borrow money from your siblings unless you've run out of options. Learn to make your own money and solve your own problems. From the ability to solve problems to earning money, force yourself to do it alone. That creates motivation. The rich people buy expensive cars and insurance policies to protect themselves. They treasure their own life. When true destruction awaits is when the wolf meets the pig and the lamb. The pig and lamb would certainly die. It's not about the quantity. Who you are lies in your self-awareness and positioning. Let's go deeper into the theory of yin and yang. Every element of yin contains an element of yang, and vice versa. Yin and yang give rise to and affect each other. Like how the Book of Changes says that things change constantly. Your mentality bank savings, physical strength, emotional status. The food that you ate, people you met, etc. All these will keep affecting your life differently. They're constantly changing. What's the concept behind the book of changes? No event will repeat itself, life is always in the process of changing. You can see the dragon's head but not the tail. That's the book of changes. This can also be considered fate or energy. So good things change day by day. Positive energy also accumulates. The best is having both good and bad. 
That way you can maintain balance. So when I'm actively saving and accumulating, the result could be pushing things to another peak. After the peak comes a massive change. We see it as explosive. Things reverse when they reach an extreme. Everything is constantly evolving. What is yin is also yang. What is yang is also yin. We start to pick up what the yin yang diagram tries to show. The arising of yin and yang elements is behind all formations in the world. So we start to get to know fate. We understand a small detail inside it, like the issue with wealth. After listening to me, are you going to have second thoughts about earning a lot of money? I advise parents not to take your kids to fortune tellers easily. They're too young for that. I feel that many fortune tellers. They have certain abilities when it comes to knowing one's fate. Say your son could become president, but the fortune teller wasn't able to see that. So he says your son could become the boss of a business. Then this could potentially be an obstacle for the child's journey to become a president. That's why I suggest this. Some kids also lack the endurance. When the fortune teller says the kid has a good life, he's going to be president. Then the child would say, I'm the future president. How can my parents disrespect me every day? They spank me, yell at me and ask me to take tests every day. How dare you? Wash my feet. My mom can do that and my dad can do my homework. If you guys immediately serve him, then he's ruined, right? If my fate is this good, why would I work so hard? What if he says that the child will have a bad life? Say, a child is 7 and he's predicted to die at the age of 13. The child thinks, I'm going to die anyway, why bother with studying? The fortune teller also said that you'll live a poor life. If I have a poor life, why apply to universities? You say, the fortune teller is talking nonsense. If you don't believe him, why go to him in the first place? See, trouble. If a good life is predicted, oh my, you can no longer handle your kid. If a bad life is predicted, then the child may give up on life. Aren't these all trouble? It's bad when it's inaccurate, it's even worse when it is accurate. Thus, it's best to avoid fortune telling, so that kids can have a normal, reasonable and balanced heart. And grow with a normal attitude. So don't bring kids to a fortune teller. There are no benefits. When I was little, my friend was told by a fortune teller. That he had a fate fit for a lord. Nowadays, that's equal to being the prime minister. He became nobody in the end, because he had quit school the next day. He said he wanted to visit all the countries, so he jumped on the train and left. His mom didn't know where he'd gone. Two months later, he returned and said, I need more travel budget. The fortune teller said he would become a lord. He started visiting around the country. Are you crazy? His mom was worried about his future so she brought him to a fortune teller. That made him quit school. He was smart, but if he didn't have the knowledge, how was he going to exchange it for cash and daily allowances? So when he grew up, he scammed people. At the age of 19, he was put behind bars for fraud. It's not like what the fortune teller said. The prediction didn't mention jail, right? Why did he predict such a thing? It could be a wrong prediction or just a lie for customer satisfaction. Everyone likes sweet talk. That's how it is. So, I'm reminding people not to do this. 
This is what I think. I'm saying this because I think it's better for you. In life, it's more important to work hard and be dedicated to your responsibility. Like the diagram I drew before. A positive and negative diagram about karma. Inyan can also be transformed to the manifestation of karma. So I feel that knowing what you're predestined to be is better. Not knowing it at all is also good. If there's a path for me to live on, I'll be responsible and work hard toward it. It has to be a right path, scamming doesn't count. If it's a normal career, work on it diligently, seriously, and responsibly. Don't waste your life. Don't waste yourself. Do your best to do things well. Even if it's working for others, your boss is giving you money, so you can support your family. So do your job well. I've heard people complaining about their job and bosses all the time. But when they get fired, they feel like it's the end of the world. They even resort to suicide or suffer heart attacks. It triggers a lot of illnesses, right? But when he had the job, he never did it well. He just stayed because of the salary. This is the worst kind of life. It's vile, rat-like and dishonorable. He won't be able to achieve anything. It's okay to be kept in the dark as to what we're predestined to live out. As long as we put in effort, work hard and do our job well. We won't feel our lives were wasted when we die. We'd be proud when we see our deceased ancestors. As for me, I'm okay to face death anytime. When I meet Buddha, I'd say, I didn't do well, but I really tried. You need this kind of behavior. That's what I call an exciting life. Looking back on your life. When you tell your story to your grandkids, if it's all trivial and petty things, then that's a very boring life. When you haven't given your all to your job and your family, You have a boring life. So, love what you do and give it your best shot. The depth of our intention at work is crucial. I hope people don't look down on themselves. Have less selfishness and more virtue, with the public in mind. Virtue as in having less selfishness and more focus on public interest. Then, when we've finished life's journey, and start recalling our life in old age, we'll feel very happy. Your friends will respect you. And you'll be seen as a worthy friend, not a typical acquaintance. How happy would that life be? You've brought happiness, achievement and joy to this world. That's amazing.
是。
世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨。
观世音菩萨，南无观世。
是因菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音。
南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿南无观世音菩萨，南无。观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南。观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨，南无。观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨。
南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。
南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南。观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无。观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。南无观世音菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，啊，南无观世音菩萨，南无观世。
是夜菩萨，南无观世音菩萨，阿、啊、南无观世音菩萨。Now it's time for our closing exercise. Rub your palm until they're warm. Glide your palms over your face, from chin to forehead to cheek, without actually touching them. Rub your palms until they're warm. Part your fingers and firmly comb your hair from forehead to the back of the neck. Rub your palms. Pat your entire body from top to bottom. Pat your head firmly with relaxed wrists. Do it calmly. Pat your left shoulder. Then pat your right shoulder. Continue to pat your chest. Then pat your left armpit down to the side of your rib cage. Switch to the right. Pat your right armpit down to the side of your rib cage. Next, pat your abdomen with relaxed hands. Please stand up slowly. Pat down from the front of your thighs, knees, shins, ankles, and tops of your feet. Gently pat the lower back, down to the buttocks, 
down to the back of your thighs. Calves, ankles, and heels. Continue to pat the inside and outside of your legs. Start with your left leg. Relax your wrists and pat with slight force. Then pat your right leg. Continue to pat your arms. Start with your left arm. Then pat your right arm. After patting your entire body, Rub your palms. Gently massage your whole body without actually touching it. Visualize that you are gently sweeping away the dust and worries. You are becoming healthy and happy. At the same time, think I'm closing this meditation practice. Today's class has successfully completed. See you tomorrow.